Hi, I'm Jay Swinger, your flight instructor for today. We'll be running through the full lesson plan, but if you're already familiar with some of the basics, you can talk to me about skipping ahead. Before we begin, I need to perform a few routine physical tests. Regulations, you know. Please move your head as far up or down as you can. Okay, now please walk a few steps. Okay, now do a few jumping jacks, please. Finally, a few squats, please. Great! You seem to be in good physical shape, so we can move on to your flying lessons. Let me know how you want to proceed. Yes? We'll start by using the transporter room outside to go to the docking bay. Quasar, Vanguard. You have cleared for undocking. Proceed. Use the strafing controls to move sideways or vertically. Okay, before we continue, make sure there's no obstacle right in front of you. I can't check from here, so I have to trust you on this one. When you clear, gently accelerate forwards. There's usually a speed limit inside docking areas, but you don't have to worry about exceeding it. The ship's computer will limit the speed for you. You can also fly backwards. Try this now. Your ship sensors are all well and good, but sometimes it can be useful to get a more direct look at things. First, look around your cockpit. There are many different kinds, but ship cockpits often provide a wide field of view outside the ship. You can also look at your ship from the outside with the magic of camera drones. Try it. Fly around a bit to get a feel for how it behaves. also cycle into a different external camera mode. Try the camera controls now. This 
This also works on targets within range. For now, return to the normal cockpit view to move on. You can even tell a camera drone to stay in a fixed location. Try this now. to see what's in front of you with fewer obstructions. You can even make the cockpit practically invisible to you. Is there anything camera drones can't do? Try it now. So, let's practice what you've learned so far. I've prepared a little course for you. Please fly close to each of the navigation beacons in turn. Your next target will always be marked in orange. Argon Wharf. The ship also has a boost function. Don't worry, you're not being timed. your shield, so use it wisely. You may also notice that it has set your speed to maximum. This is normal and will only persist until you change speed again. Some pilots even find it a convenient way to set their speed to maximum. something you are going to be using a lot. I marked a remote location for you to fly to. Don't worry, I don't expect you to crawl there at your base speed. First, please align your ship so it points roughly towards the target. Now, activate travel mode. Depending on your engine type, it may take a little time to get started. speed bar just below the crosshairs. You will keep accelerating for a while until you reach your ship's top travel speed. You've probably noticed other modes in the list when you activated this one. Each mode has its special use and only one mode can be active at a time. Unknown object. gathered some speed, you'll notice that steering has become much harder. This is why it's best to point your ship towards your destination before engaging travel mode. Now, turn off the mode the same way you turned it on. You are now coasting, which means a few things. First, your ship is decelerating much more slowly than it normally would. Second, steering is easy again. Give it a try now. Third, you've probably noticed that your ship keeps flying in the same direction. 
You can come to a stop much more quickly by actively decelerating. This automatically re-engages the safety limits on steering. Try it now. As for the travel direction, any strafe movement will revert that to the behavior you're used to. Do this now. You can also drop out of travel mode more quickly, skipping the coasting phase. Let's try this now. Please reactivate travel mode. Now wait until you build up some speed. Whenever you're ready, quickly drop out of travel mode. Great! The next part will take place some distance from here, so let's take a break and let the autopilot do the hard work for now. The autopilot automatically navigates to the current objective. It engages travel mode when appropriate and makes use of gates, accelerators and highways. It even avoids obstacles in the way. Uh, well, mostly, which is why you still need to be at the controls. You may notice that it sometimes turns travel mode off when everything seems wide open to you. The safeties are on a bit of a hair trigger, probably to keep insurance rates from skyrocketing. While we wait, let's check out your logbook. There are several menus you can access this way. Open the one that's highlighted now. Here you have access to details about your current status and statistics. The logbook is highlighted. Open it now. As you can see, there are several categories. You can select one to filter the entries or look at all of them at once. Most of the tips you've seen up until now have been added to the logbook. You can always go back and reread them if you feel like you've missed or forgotten something. Take your time looking around these menus. Close them when you're ready to move on. Disable the autopilot at any time and fly the rest of the way yourself. Good, you've arrived. There's a ship next to you. Its color on your HUD indicates that it's not hostile. Please select it as your target. Cargo. Match speed with your target. By the way, matching speed is even possible when both you and your target are in travel mode. I've now activated your primary weapon. The small dots that have just appeared indicate where the weapons are currently aiming. They will automatically track your current target as long as it's close enough. There are a handful of targets in front of you. Their hunt color indicates that they are enemies. Note that the hunt markers of some targets are smaller. These targets are currently outside your weapon range. Select the closest enemy target. A new HUD element has appeared right in the center of the target. This is the aim ahead indicator. It shows you where you need to aim, which is especially useful if the target is moving. Slowly cycle through all the targets. When a target outside your weapon range has been selected, you can see the weapon indicators becoming darkened. The aim ahead indicator also changes its appearance. Select the closest enemy target again and shoot at it until it's destroyed. Cargo drone.
closer in order to hit some of them. If you look to the right of your crosshair, you'll see bars next to your weapons that gradually fill up when you are firing. This is heat. It automatically dissipates when you stop firing. This happens more slowly if there are multiple weapons cooling down at the same time. Cargo drone. Cargo drone. Your weapon's just overheated. You will not be able to fire until they've cooled to a safe temperature. This target is much sturdier than the others. Look at the blue bar above the target. This is its shield strength. After a few seconds without damage, it will begin to recharge. All shields will work like this, including your own. see a lock being acquired. You may fire when ready. Cargo drone. Cargo drone. Ammunition container. It's another type of missile. It has been automatically added to your ammunition storage. Missile launchers have limited ammunition. You can see the number of remaining missiles to the left of your crosshair. Let's go into more detail about your weapons. Open the ship menu. We'll focus on the highlighted weapon configuration section. Each installed weapon has its own row. The squares in each row show you which weapon groups that weapon is part of. You can assign any weapon to any weapon group. You can also change the ammunition that's loaded into your missile launchers. Try it if you like. Close the menu and move on. cycle through your configured weapon groups. Please activate each primary group at least once. You can also cycle through the available ammunition for any active missile launcher. Try this now. It takes a little time for the new missile type to be loaded into the launcher. This concludes the weapons tutorial. There's a capital ship nearby. Please approach it. Cargo drone. Unknown ship. Get as close as possible to its surface. You can get much closer than that. All 
right, now come to a stop. You are now flying relative to the ship thanks to special flight assistance software. This works for most things that are bigger than medium-sized ships. No matter what the capital ship does, you will move along with it. This is especially useful for combat as well for docking or undocking. I've set up some targets on the ship's surface. Please destroy them. Try to use the ship's surface as cover wherever possible. Your strength thrusters are useful here. Find the next objective. You may use travel mode or the autopilot if you like. Autopilot engaged. This wreck has something inside it. The ship will not fit, so you're going to have to get out of your ship and do a spacewalk. Move a little closer to the indicated position and park your ship there. Autopilot disengaged. Get up and leave the ship in your spacesuit. Quasar, Vanguard. that you keep moving in the same direction. That's because spacesuits don't have flight assistance and are limited to Newtonian flight. Any directional input, whether it's strafing, accelerating or decelerating, will push you in that direction. I'll let you try it out for a little while. While you do that, your spacesuit is equipped with a small hand laser. Please don't try to use it in fights with actual ships. You'd be pulverized immediately. You also have a repair tool. This tool works on most damaged objects, as long as they're not actually wrecked. This thing is beyond repair, though. Try to come to a stop using these inputs. Tricky, isn't it? Luckily, there's an easier way. Try it now. Much better. I think you're ready for some maneuvering. Please fly inside the wreck using the indicated entry point.
access hatch, but it's malfunctioning. Look for a broken control panel and use your repair tool to fix it. oxygen indicator which is slowly going down. There's no need to worry about it. You will be back in your ship with plenty of time to spare. Another broken control panel. Repair this one as well. There's a lockbox here. What a lucky find. Please activate your weapon and carefully shoot off all the locks. Chip weapons also work, but you have to be much more careful, guys. Lockboxes are fragile, and some even explode. for yourself after you finish here. Please leave the wreck and return to your ship now. Spacesuit is also equipped with a booster. You can use it now to reach your ship more quickly. Be careful though, it's easy to overshoot or crash into your target that way. I see you're already familiar. to the dock and fly inside. While the feeling of flying your spacesuit is fresh in your mind, let's try the same with your ship. Please turn off flight assistance now. I'll give you time to play around with it. Re-enable flight assistance when you want to move on to the next step. Next part is technically against the rules, so um, you didn't hear it from me. We'll combine two of the things you've learned, aimed at empty space and activate travel mode.
Build up some speed. Flight assist. Your speed is no longer increasing. More importantly, though, your ship is very maneuverable again. It takes some practice, but you can use this for significant course corrections during travel mode. Try this now by aligning to the new objective, then re enabling flight assistance. I find it really fun to drift my way into jump gates at high speed that way, but do be careful and practice in a safe environment first. I don't want to hear about you turning your ship into a pancake, right? Right. Now that the exciting part is over, let's wind down with something a bit calmer. Fly to the Mark Station. Engaged. Now that you're in range, you can interact with it to request docking permission, just like you did with your ship from the spacesuit. Argon Wharf. Follow the trail of lights to your assigned dock. ship in the indicated direction. You should now be able to see an abstract representation of the docking bay and your position relative to it. Each element must be aligned before you can dock. When aligned, the elements change colour from red to green. I usually align my orientation first. Begin by moving the centre of your crosshair to the matching element in the docking UI. Ship is fully aligned, let go of the steering controls. There's a triangular element pointing upwards that represents your ship's position over the dock. If it's darkened, then your ship is outside the displayable area. Your ship is currently too far back. Slowly accelerate forward and stop when the horizontal line turns green. If you overshoot, just stop and correct. The ship is currently too far to the left. Move right until the remaining lines turn green. Now, gently move your ship down until the docking computer takes over. software upgrades that make this process a bit easier. Now that you're docked, you can do a number of things right here from your ship. The ship information menu shows you all kinds of things about your ship. Take a look at it now. 
This is where you can buy and install various upgrades for your ship, including the docking software that I mentioned earlier. Feel free to try this out now. Now that you're docked, you can do a number of things right here from your ship. The ship information menu shows you all kinds of things about your ship. Take a look at it now. Below the general information, you can see your cargo storage. It's separate from the ammunition bay, and there are even more types of storage that we're not using at the moment. Small items picked up from crates or lockboxes, on the other hand, are stored on your person and move with you between ships. You can access your inventory via the player information tab. You can close this menu now. You might have seen that your ship is carrying some energy cells. If you want to, you can sell these here using the trade menu. Open it now. This is where you can trade wares with the station. Your cargo is on the left-hand side and the station's buy offers are on the right. Because this is a wharf, it doesn't have any products for sale in here. But it does want to buy a lot of different resources. Energy cells, for example. and shipyards also buy used ships. The beauty you're sitting in is actually mine, though, so don't even try selling it. You can keep trying out these menus if you'd like. Undock when you're ready to proceed. a little thing that many pilots don't use, but if you do end up liking it, you'll really appreciate it. Depending on how you've set up your flight controls, you might only have convenient control over two steering axes rather than all three. This is fine for most pilots. However, with many ship configurations, rolling is much more effective than yawing or vice versa. This is where adaptive steering can help. When turned on, the primary steering axis will be set to whichever one is best for your current ship configuration. I've turned on adaptive steering and changed the thruster configuration of your ship to favor rollover yaw. Fly around a little to get a feeling for it. That concludes your training. Feel free to roam around and practice some of what you've learned. I've set up a selection of ships for you to try out. You can teleport between them using the map. Sorry, no capital ships. You'll have to save up for your own. When you feel ready to move on, you can either try out some of the advanced tutorials or put your skills to the test in the real world. Goodbye and good luck out there. Melva, Vanguard, Drill, Mineral, 
Vanguard. Cerberus, Vanguard. Elite, Vanguard. Nova, Vanguard. tolerate your actions. Ejecting. Emergency eject successful. 